The New York State budget is really late, and Republicans came to town to say our streets are unsafe. So many questions, but geez Louise, what are the answers? The point starts right now. Michael Gennaris is the Deputy Senate Majority Leader and a man with his finger on the pulse of what's going on above Bear Mountain. I have so many questions, I don't even know where to begin. But one of the things I've been interested in, um, in terms of the budget, is something that's been an issue near and dear to your heart, which is free bus service. And I'm wondering if you think that a pilot program to provide free bus service is going to be part of the budget. Well, I, I sure hope so. As we're getting towards the end, it's still alive, uh, which is exciting. Both uh, the Senate and the Assembly proposed a pilot program of two lines per borough, 10 lines throughout the city, uh, so we can see how it works. Does it increase ridership? Does it increase safety, which we believe uh, would happen, um, and hopefully get people back into mass transit, which has been uh, not the case since the pandemic. Well, uh, my understanding is that each in each borough, there would be one line that would be on a major corridor, and another line would serve an underserved area of, of the borough. Is that true? Yes, and look, a lot of the decisions about which lines work the best would be done in consultation with the MTA and the people that, that would know best. But the idea is one major corridor, one uh, in a community of need that uh, that would benefit from having it. And look, there's been a lot of debate about this, and some people think it's a great idea, some people think it's not. But what's great about what we've proposed is let's try it on a limited basis and see how it works. And if it works, great, we can expand it. And if it doesn't work, we can pull it back. But uh, I think you're going to see uh, real benefits if we do this. And we just had an incident where where, um, a dispute over fare evasion led to violence in a bus. But you know, the, one of the benefits of this, which is why I think a lot of the bus drivers uh, are in favor of it, is that they wouldn't be enforcers. They wouldn't have to be in the position of uh, getting into disputes with riders about whether they paid or not. And that sort of thing would also help, in addition to the fact of just getting more people using uh, buses and subways, which are at historic lows because of the pandemic. So I guess the question is, like, who pays for this? This would be paid for as part of the MTA budget. Uh, we are about to approve a bailout package of over a billion dollars uh, for MTA. This, in this case, it's not all their fault. This is because the ridership is down uh, about 60% of pre-pandemic levels, so there's a lot of money that they're missing, a big budget hole there. Um, and w as part of that, this pilot program would cost maybe $50 million, which sounds like a lot, but in the context of a billion to a billion and a half, it's a relatively modest sum. So we want to give them the money they need to operate, but also give them some ideas on how we might be able to do things more innovative and, and better. See, the thing that I question is this. If you decide to do this and it looks like it works and it's been done in a lot of other cities around the country uh, eventually if you want to make all the buses free that's a big nut and how do you pay for that and how do you guarantee that the MTA which has run deficits for as long as I can remember um, how do you pay for that well one step at a time that's why we want to start it as a pilot program we can see how it works why it works and where it works and we can expand it on a phased in basis if we choose to do that uh, or not um, so we don't have to make the big decision of whether the entire system should go free uh, tomorrow we can do this a little bit and see what the benefits are and then make educated decisions about it so how do you feel about the governor's idea to fund a lot of the MTA through uh, casino gambling not a big fan. Uh, first of all, uh, casino revenues are dedicated to education uh, in our state, and uh, I think a lot of us would like to see that continue. Um, and who knows what the deal is with these casinos and how much of this revenue is ongoing versus the one-time licensing fees that are getting paid. Uh, the fact is, the MTA is a public service. The mass transit system, the subways, the buses, it should be something that the public pays, and we shouldn't be in the situation where we're constantly uh, worrying about how we're going to fill the budget holes that they have. How do you feel about the idea of these residential parking permits as a way to fund some of the MTA's deficit? <laughs> we advanced that as a kind of creative thought. There were a lot of ideas. We all agree that the MTA needs over a billion dollars to fill this hole, right? The Assembly, the Senate, the Governor, that's, that's the good news. We all know and have identified the scope of the problem and what we need to do about it. Um, and then the question is, where does the money come from? And so we were all coming up with different ideas. Uh, to put at the table and, and think about. And one of those, which I've heard for, about in my communities for many years, is what about a residential parking system where um, you make sure that you don't have these uh, people who commute into the neighborhoods. This is a problem in Western Queens specifically. 
drop their cars off on the streets and then hop the subway for a couple of stops to get into Manhattan. Um, and the residents of these neighborhoods can't find parking. They're circling the streets for you know hours at a time just trying to park near their own homes. Um, and we thought, let's, let's give the city the authorization to consider this. And the proposal we made was not mandated. It wasn't something that would force anyone to do anything. We just said the city would need the state to approve this if they wanted to do it. So let's say if they choose to do it, they have the authority to go forward and do it in any which way uh, they see it seem appropriate. I mean, I think it's also a big concern in upper Manhattan, especially with congestion pricing coming in. There's a big concern that people from New Jersey are going to come in and, and park on the streets in upper Manhattan. So is that a concern as well? Yeah, and that's it's, it's a similar dynamic to what we're facing in Western Queens, and I'm sure Brooklyn's facing the same, which is you, you everyone brings their cars into the as close as they can get without suffering, whether it's a financial penalty or a traffic issue, um, they drop their cars there and then they, they, get, they take advantage of the mass transit system to take very short trips to get where they're going. So let's talk about the budget. Another extender is probably going to be necessary this week. Any prognosis of like when there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel? I think we're finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. So we're getting uh, into the end game uh, of the budget now and uh, hopefully um, as we get into the f next few days, we'll close it down, certainly before the month is over. Bail reform? Uh, the governor has been insistent. Uh, I think it's been widely reported that um, uh, the parameters of, a, of an agreement are there. Um, many of us want to make decisions on this issue that are based on real facts and data and not the politicization and the demagoguery that's gone on around it. Um, but I think uh, we've done the best we can to walk that line. So basically there'll be some changes to bail reform in terms of least restrictive? Uh, again, nothing is final until it's final and you see a bill in print, but it does seem that that's where it's headed. So the big issue also has been housing. And there's a, there are reports that that housing plan won't be in the budget, but might be considered later on in the session. Your thoughts on that? Well, it's interesting. A lot of the big issues, bail being one of them, housing is another, are not strictly speaking budgetary issues. Uh, and we've gotten to this point in the state where governors use the use the budget to advance their policy agendas, which is not how it should work. So um, there was discussion of loading up all these complicated housing questions into the budget discussion. It seems that um, that maybe more than we can handle as part of the budget and so yes we do have uh, till June uh, in the remainder of the session once the budget's done I think uh, there'd be an interest in tackling these housing issues. But I mean the thing is it's sort of a balance because you have on the one hand the governor wanting to build more housing around the state also affordable housing but you also have tenants who are looking for protections and a lot of interesting ideas good cause eviction mm -hmm. you know housing vouchers things like that your thoughts? All of the above. Uh, those things are not inconsistent, um, and we should be able to encourage more affordable housing to be built, truly affordable, because we desperately need it. Uh, but we also need to make sure people in their homes who have homes are protected, so we're not just recycling the problem, creating more housing, and then kicking people out of the housing they already have. Uh, and so our view in the Senate is, yes, let's figure out responsible ways to increase uh, housing production, and let's also protect uh, people in their homes through good cause and other uh, other measures. The hope was we could reach a grand deal around housing, and I think it's very complicated to do in the closing days of the budget, so hopefully we'll be able to tackle it before we adjourn in June. So we have about 30 seconds left. I mean, do you think there'll also be some money for NYCHA? Uh, I certainly hope so. We're always fighting for NYCHA. Um, in the previous administration, Governor Cuomo, was holding back NYCHA money because he was unhappy with the way they were spending it. There's certainly a lot that needs to be done in terms of the way they administer the agency there, but the people who live in those homes shouldn't suffer because of bad management. We need to help them. Okay, well, we're going to have to leave it right there for now. But our conversation continues right after the show on our streaming channel, CBS News New York.